hi guys welcome back to my channel and i think this video is so overdue guys the amount of questions i get on my cabin crew videos i was like you know what let me just do another q a because the amount of dms emails comments i am getting for cabin crew i'm like i need to help these people but I'm also extremely busy, so I thought, why don't I just do a Q&A box on my Instagram, which a lot of people filled out, and then also I went through some of my like YouTube comments, and I think I did like a poll on my YouTube as well, where some people left some questions on there, so I think I've collated some DMs as well that I've got. I'm really gonna try and answer everything. The amount of people I've met who have watched my cabin crew videos where I've started working or I've met random people or people that know me that they've watched my video of cabin crew and it's helped them. Thank you so, so much. I'm really glad that this has helped you. It's really important for me to try and get as much information out as I can because I remember when I first started being cabin crew, last summer I was cabin crew, I just needed a bit more information and that's kind of like my aim is to try and help you guys with that before i get on with the video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up leave me a comment subscribe to my youtube and follow me on instagram and tiktok it is just jessica jessica x okay i don't even know where to start guys i've got so many flipping questions this was a dm congratulations on getting your wings blah, blah, blah. i've been watching youtube videos about cabin crew that happened so much with my application and my interview that is amazing i love that for you i'm starting my training in january congratulations and i just wondered where people stayed whilst doing their training Training, who live far away from London. Okay, so originally I'm from Birmingham, so I needed to live down in London because you are there most days for like the six weeks. And then now I've moved again and I've moved even further, so I had to move down again. The first time round when I did cabin crew, a lot of people were using these like forums these cabin crew forums and people were sort of connecting with you on this. I rent my room out for crew during their training periods and you can pay this much, blah, blah, blah. That's how I did it the first time round. The second time round when, when I came back, I tried to go on these forums again, but nobody was really using them now. What I sort of did was I did a little bit of like searching. I joined like the new entrant Facebook page for the airline I'm with. And then on there, people were posting like cabin crew accommodation, London Heathrow, London Heathrow accommodation, um, cabin crew accommodation. There's all these different Facebook groups. And on there, you've got so many people who are basically advertising a room they're renting out. I lived with a lady in Windsor and it was basically her family home and I stayed with them and there was a few other crew girls that were there at the same time too. And then sometimes people were just coming in for the night and staying with her. But there's people in like Hounslow, Slough, all over London that literally rent their room out. I'm not gonna lie, it's not the cheapest thing to do, but it's kind of one of them. You need to do it, you need to fork out during the training just to get it over and done with. And then the benefits you're gonna reap after is gonna be amazing anyway. Um, I know some people when I was training there this time they had hotels that you've got like the Ibis, the Holiday Inn, Travel Lodge, all of these ones near, especially on like Bath Road. So you can go and stay in a hotel as well. It is more with a hotel than what you would pay staying with somebody you rent in a room. Personally, I didn't want to go into a hotel just because I wanted the facilities of like a microwave, an oven and stuff like that, which obviously in a hotel room you're not going to get. So that's how i did it go on the facebook pages put in like cabin crew accommodation london heathrow cabin crew accommodation and it will all come up there so i hope that helps with that okay so some of the questions i got is the six weeks training full on in terms of role play scenario acting so the six weeks it is very intense it is full on you know i'd be downplaying it if i said it wasn't there is a lot of in fact most of it is role play and scenarios most of it is so you do like your theory work where you'll learn in the classroom, they'll teach you everything, they'll show you the physical scenarios of like say the trainers acting out, for example. So for example like SEP week, it's all about emergency evacuations, firefighting, all of that and then you've got like all your avmed stuff and which is like basically all your medical things. They will like go over and show you the scenarios first, teach you and you sort of go over. It gets to a point where it's really repetitive, but it's good because it sort of like drills in you then. You will do the scenarios basically and it is intense and you do get marked like pass or fail and people do fail. You just have to really practice, practice, practice. There's quite a lot of exams as well. So you'll have all your exams on, you'll have an exam on medical stuff, you'll have exams on 
SCP week, security week, all your different aircrafts, all the different variations. There is quite a lot. It is intense six weeks, but it has to be because there's so much security and so important with like fighting fires, dealing with medical situations. Because when you're 37,000 feet, there is no one else up there. I mean, you might have a nurse and doctor on board and stuff, but it's learning how to use all the equipment. If there's a fire on board, who's going to do it? Because you haven't got, you can't call 999 and get the fire brigade out. You know, it, it's very intense, but it needs to be. So I'm starting with BA in January. I was just wondering what size cases brands to buy that don't break the ban. Okay, so to be honest with you, as long as they're black and they don't have to be hard shell, but it's better if it's hard shell and they're in the size, I can't remember the size, guys. If you look online, you'll be able to see, but most cases are either small, medium, large. I always have the smaller case for my like carry-on luggage and then I'll have a topper bag. My topper bag is from Trip. If you watch my cabin crew must-haves, you'll see the cases and the bags that I bought. I show you in that video. I did used to buy from Trip for the suitcases, but my bigger case, which is Trip, and my smaller case, which was Trip, both ended up breaking. So I didn't buy from Trip this time. I bought from Home Essentials, I think. I can't remember what the brand is, but watch that other video and you'll see. I think it was called Cabin Crew Must Haves, the video on my channel. And I've had no problems with them so far, but obviously I haven't started traveling far, far yet. It's just been like if I've used them for going out or content days or whatever. As long as they're hard shell and they've got no like patterns, designs on them, stuff like that. They can have like, a lot of the trip ones had like the squares, the black squares, all that's sort of fine. But as long as it's black and, could you have navy? I don't think you can. I'm not too sure. The uniform guidelines, you will get sent all of the uniform standards and guidelines anyway when you join. But yeah, as long as you get a small one and a big one, I feel like the big one for when you're checking in and you're doing longer destinations, and then a smaller one for like your short haul or shorter long hauls where you don't really need as much. Maybe you're only there for like one local night. Also, if you've got your bigger one, obviously if you're going somewhere like Cape Town, you want to bring your wine back and stuff because the wine is so good there. So just bear that in mind. Did you start on the date given? With the airline I joined with, this is sort of like the bigger problem is the referencing. Some airlines are you know, taking longer and it's just because they're more enhanced security checks now that they're doing and there is such an overload on trying to get loads of crew in that they are struggling. So it, although it's frustrating for us, we also got to remember that they're so stressed and they've got so many people they're trying to get through. I was originally given the 1st of September as my start date. I got delayed. I was cleared to start that date and then they called me a few days before and was like, we can't clear you for that day. And I was like, ugh. I'd planned all my accommodation around it. It was really, really annoying, but anyway, they only delayed me five days, so I got pushed back five days, so I started on the 6th. So it wasn't that bad, because some people end up getting delayed weeks and weeks. So that was okay, and to be honest with you, I'm so glad they did that now, because my training group was amazing. So I'm really, really glad that they did. I'm glad it all works out in the end. And I'm sure the training group on the first would have been amazing as well. But you know, you're grateful in the end, aren't you? Because I've made some amazing, amazing friends from it, so. I was only five days overdue, which is not that much really. My start date with BA is November 21st, congratulations. I'm really praying it's not delayed. <sighs> it, again, it's one of them. I've got a lot of sort of ones about dates and stuff. It's, it's sort of out of our control. As long as you do all your part, your end with the referencing and try and get everything covered as as quick as you can, get everything sent off. Whenever BA message you and say, get this done, just do it as straight away as you can. But there's only so much you can do. As long as you're doing what you can do, you can only do what you can do and BA can only do what they can do at their pace and then there's the external checks which are out of everyone's control. So I really hope you get your start date. We really hope you get your start date when you want it. And it is getting better to what it was. It is getting a lot better. So I hope that that gives you a bit of peace of mind. I always just say positive thinking. You know, pos just think that you, you just tell yourself you're starting on that day. <laughs> I'm leaving police for BA. How have you found your time away from flying and being back? So I actually left for the police as well. Flying before with BA, left for the police and then came back. I find going away and then coming back, a lot has changed. I actually think amazing changes for the company. I was always proud to work for that airline anyway. I think to me, maybe I'm biased, I think it's the best airline in the world. I love it, it's the flagship carrier for the UK. I think you should just be so, so proud to fly for 
you know, Britain's airline, which is amazing. Sorry, I've got to undo my button. Oh, I've just eaten, guys, I'm not gonna lie. Like, you know when your jeans are like pressing in on you and it's giving you a belly ache and yeah. We won't go too much into that. I do find coming back and then retraining, because obviously first time I trained was in 2017, and then obviously now I'm training again in 2022. The training is, a lot of it's the same, some of it is different, but I feel like the, um, how do I explain it? It's very different in the sense of, I found it quite almost terrifying when I first did it the first time I was terrified. And I do think sometimes in, intense training it can be a little bit scare tactics but i really felt like there was a lot more support there this time and i really appreciated that i really loved that and i find in the airline in itself there's a lot more teams that are there for support now and there's so many changes that have happened that i think have made the company even better than they were because it just needed to like for example pay is better there's better agreements there's you know longer trips now like it's just i'm just really happy i think i've come back at the best time i've gone away had some life experience did some other things i can tick off i say i did and then i've come back and it's got even better so i'm i'm really buzzing is this year's training much different compared to when you first initially joined ba so yeah like i just said it is a bit different i feel like it's not that it's more relaxed because it's not relaxed you know it can't be relaxed something like this but it definitely felt like felt like it was more warming to be there this time i built better rapport with the trainers i feel like i wasn't terrified and i wasn't like oh my god like anxiety wasn't through the roof i felt more calm which i think was a really better approach from the company and we train in and I felt like it was different this time in the sense of the timings of the days were different as well. I looked at my schedule when I joined last time and it was pretty much like nine fives, eight fours, whereas now it was like six twos or different two tens. And that's just because they've got so many entrants coming in that they're trying to fill all the gaps everywhere. So the timetables are a bit everywhere. Uh, this time was better for me because they gave us a tour of like the CRC, we had a proper ceremony day, we could invite people, you know, there were so many different things that happened this time that I didn't get last time. Some of the people did, but my training group in particular last time didn't get those. You know, we didn't have a proper ceremony, we got our wings in like the first markup, I think it was. We didn't get to invite people, we didn't go to Waterside, we didn't go to the CRC, we didn't get that tour of T5, which I obviously know T5 and the report centre now anyway, but it was good to see what had changed. Like even in the um, report centre, a lot of things had changed, a lot of things aren't there anymore, a lot of things are different. And when I was doing like the door drills and stuff, a lot of the commands have changed, a lot of the things that the process has changed. So it was interesting to see. I think I preferred the training this time around just in the sense of my anxiety was less and I felt less stressed. I was still stressed by the way guys, I don't think I'm like underplaying this. The first time around was really exciting though as well because you were brand new, it was all new, you didn't know what to expect and that was really exciting. I had a really amazing group the first time around as well. Some of them are my best friends still to this day, now I see them all the time. And you really do build that in training group, you, you meet some of your bestest friends in training groups. Like even this time around now I've made, I know I've made like some best friends there so it's really really good. I, I, I like each time for different reasons. Do you do aircraft visits during training? Yes, so you are technically not allowed to fly on that aircraft until you've done a visit, apart from if it's a variation. So for example, when you start training now with BA, you'll get trained on the baby buses, and we got took on the A321neo. And you don't need to go on the 19s and 20s as well. It's just one of the baby buses and you can sort of, there's not a fat, fat difference in all of them to be fair. They're, the baby buses are the easier ones anyway. They're the least of your problems. But then you do a aircraft visit for the 777 and we did one for the 787 as well, but you didn't need to do the 787 because it was a variant, we were told. But we just, we got to see anyway, which I loved the 787 when I was, um, their last time I was trained on the 747, which is, don't even get me emotional, like queen of the skies, but she's gone now, unfortunately. I remember when the 78 started coming in when I was there before, you had to wait like a year and then you got trained on it. So I loved the 78 when I was there. And I also got my uh, club and first reinstated too, so. I'm really happy about that. But yes, yeah, so you do get to go on the aircraft visits, which is really good because you can sort of like familiarise yourself with the aircrafts then as well, which is 
better than the mock-ups because obviously they're completely realistic. Did you find the trainers friendly? Yes, actually. Everybody's training styles are different. Our trainers were really, really lovely, but you do have different trainers all throughout. So sometimes you have the same trainers for like three days, four days, one day, and they do change because the trainers are trained in different things. You've got like SEP trainers, customer service trainers, blah, blah, blah. You do hear stories and you do hear things and you know all of that but it's like anywhere you always get good eggs and bad, bad eggs don't you but i found that my experience was really good and i think even last time when i trained i don't think i ha i can't remember anybody that i thought was awful <laughs> do you prefer the online assessment day or the person assessment day oh my god so obviously first time round, i had to go to waterside it was all done face to face the second time it was all done online I actually found it really easy online. I preferred it because I found it easier and I could sit in the comfort of my own home and all of that. But I do think that face to face, you've got full day experience. You know, you sat there, you did PowerPoints together, you did loads of group activities, you did role plays, and it's probably a lot more thorough. However, you know, I, do, I did definitely prefer it online because I felt like it was done in a few hours. I didn't have to travel all the way up to London because obviously I commute. So it was easier for me to do it online. But I think that people would maybe prefer the the face-to-face -face because they get to see the headquarters and they get to sort of get more of the feel of it, see people in uniform. And I think that that gets you excited. So it's kind of, it's kind of like swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Most intense part of training. SEP week and I don't think anyone will argue with me over that SEP week. <laughs> it's basically all your emergency drills, evacuations, firefighting, all the stuff that you can basically fail on. Obviously you can fail all throughout the course but that is the most intense course and even the trainers will say that to you like and that's to be fair in the first week so once you sort of like get past that it's a lot it's a lot easier. It's a lot nicer after that. What made you return back to the skies? So, in university, I trained for forensic investigations because I wanted to be a detective and I did want to go into child uh, protection, which, which basically deal with child abuse and stuff like that. And I got to a point after about three years when I was cabin crew before and I thought, oh, maybe I should do something now, like do something different. I think I was like 25 at the time and I was like, oh, do I need to settle down? Do I need to go into a career? And I thought, oh, because of the police, I know you have to do like 35 years now before you can retire, blah, blah, blah. So I thought, right, let me just see what I can do. I think it was a bit of a silly, not a silly move, but in hindsight, I'm like, I knew I never wanted to be a police officer for the rest of my life. So I'm still quite shocked that I did it in the first place and took the plunge and I remember the last few months at BA I was really um and R in because I loved it I loved the job I loved the people I loved going to work there was never a day where I dreaded going into work not one there was days I was tired there was days I might moan there was days I was like oh I just want to go home but I never ever didn't want to go into work never called I don't think I ever called in sick I don't think I ever called in sick I think there was one time I was late and I was going to, I was supposed to go to Amman and I still have it, that I really need to go to Amman now because I really wanted to do um, Petro, Petro, whatever it's called and I, I missed it and I was like, oh, beating myself up. I, I really did love the job and you always with jobs have up and downs and I think I was having a bit of a down and that's when I sort of did a erratic move of leaving and even when like the police was like, nearly finishing and I was getting my start date I remember turning around to my dad and I was like I don't know if I should do this I don't know if I should leave because I'm happy where I am but then Covid happened anyway so I feel like I kind of got to go and experience a couple of years somewhere else whilst everything sort of shut down anyway so there wasn't much flying going on and when there was you were sort of stuck to your room and all of that so I think I kind of did it at the right time weirdly so anyway joined the police and then realised oh, it's not massively for me, there was just, I just didn't enjoy it, I didn't, when I worked as cabin crew, I loved going to work, I was happy, I was probably in the best period of my life I would say and I just dreaded it, I hate going to work, cried all the time, the amount of times I'd cry driving into work, I just, 
I hated it. I really hated it. And I thought, no, life's way too short. I'm just going to go back and just live my best life again. COVID was clearing up and I took a lot of risks in my life this year. And, you know, so many changes happened in my life. I'm just going to do a 360 and really sort myself out. And I took the plunge and I'm so glad I did. And I haven't even started flying yet. And I'm so glad I took the plunge. Is there food available in the GLA, like a cafe, etc.? Okay, so for those who don't know, the GLA is the Global Learning Academy, um, which is where you train for BA, obviously. Oh, and some other airlines train there as well. There is, so you've got a calf on the ninth floor and they serve like breakfast, they serve lunch, and then you've got sandwiches all times of the day. You've got a Starbucks there. It's not actually a Starbucks. They don't sell Starbucks food. They just sell Starbucks coffee, but they've got paninis, they've got toasties, they've got microwaves also there. They've got hot water you can use. They've got a toaster. So don't worry about food. And it's so funny you ask that because that would be one of the questions I would ask because I'd be like, I need to know what I'm doing with food when I get there. But yeah, no, they do have lots of food facilities. So you sorted there. Why is it called cabin crew and not flying sapien shepherds? I actually don't know what that means. Let me Google what sapien shepherd is. This when I start, um, instantly regretting what I've googled. Okay, I literally can't even find what that means. If anyone knows what that means, tell me because I, I, <laughs> I really don't know what that means, I'm sorry. And then my other friend says, can we have another positioning trip please? So we positioned to Boston together and we were both in club and oh, it was just amazing, we had a really good trip. Yes, I would love to position again. Okay, so did you feel the job had any effect on your health? So <laughs> yeah, I did, but I have, quite a few health problems anyway and this was one of the reasons I did think about leaving in the end so I hadn't been diagnosed with endometriosis at this point my endometriosis was getting worse I was having really bad episodes with my bowels my bladder was getting worse like it seemed like my health was just deteriorating and I think the flying probably didn't help that. Found that like stopping flying has helped with certain symptoms, but then now I've been diagnosed, I've also basically put precautions in and been on medication and stuff like that now to help it. So I'm hoping going back is gonna be fine. I've declared this with BA anyway about my health conditions and they're fully aware and you know I've been contacted for surgery and stuff with my endometriosis so we'll see anyway the avenues that go down. I also think a lot of it is like mindset as well. When I wasn't flying the last couple of years I was still in a really I was in a really bad place mentally anyway for other reasons and my health was just all over the gaff anyway so I think a lot of it is like mindset so I'm, I'm hoping that going back and feeling like happy and in a good place that it will be okay. Obviously you can't always guarantee that. I might have some episodes again, especially, you know, like drinking water and stuff like that. If you brush your teeth or ice cubes, you just don't know, do you? It's, it's like being on holiday, but it's one of them. It's different for everybody. Some people are absolutely fine with it. Some people do struggle with certain health problems, yeah. Did you still manage to fit your own personal life hobbies around the job? Yes, so I actually felt like I had more of life when I was flying than when I did when I left the police because the police <coughs> tended to be six on, three off or six on, four off. And I was so sort of tired and couldn't be bothered after my shift and stuff there. And because I was in a miserable place, I didn't want to do anything with anyone. Whereas when I was crew, I was so buzzing and like I'd have, we used to have at least nine days off in a month, whereas it's 10 days off now. But I always found there were more days off than that, usually around nearly two weeks to two weeks. So I had a lot of time off. Obviously there were days when you're tired, when you're catching up on sleep, but I definitely found I was more social definitely found I was more social. I think you can personally fit things around that job and you can also bid for your days off or bid for trips so you get those days off that you need and want so you can sort of move your life around and so it fits whereas you can't do that in say nine to five jobs or retail always. Was the pay okay or how much did you end up taking home monthly? I know it has gone up slightly now and everyone says it varies, but it's just curious to know an average. So when I was there before, obviously they've had quite a significant pay rise since I was last there. I used to pick up about 1800 a month. That was including like all like flying allowances and stuff. And I thought that was good then. Obviously I was a bit younger then. Whereas now my friends, obviously I've not had a full month yet with flying allowances so I can't really say like what it is. 
from what I've heard from friends, it's usually about two to two and a half. It really depends on what trips you go into, where you go in, because it doesn't just work by the hour now. Like every destination is different depending on how much things are down there. So how much it is to buy food and stuff like that and to live down there. So it's, it's very different, but people who are really, really savvy will bid for the trips where they know they earn the most money and they can save a lot. And then you can take home quite a lot of money from that. It's more of a job where you're doing it for the actual passion and the love of traveling and flying. How did you find the management at BA and how was your progress monitored if you work with different crews each time? So we used to have line managers when I was there last time. So you'd have your own manager and that manager would manage about eight different people and that was your team. And then you would do like team flights with them like four times a year. I really enjoyed that because I really got on with my manager. I really got on with my team. So I used to love that. I used to look forward to seeing them. However, they scrapped all that now. You don't have a line manager and you don't have a team and you just sort of get managed on board really. So it, you have an onboard CRM, it's not called CSM now, it's called IFM, in-flight manager, and then you have an IFL, in-flight lead, who is like the second to the senior. And they just sort of manage you. What they're bringing in now, we used to have this thing called in-flight assessments that you had to do like one every 90 days, I think it was. They're bringing them back now, they did scrap them, they're bringing them back and you have to do one every six weeks and you just basically get the manager or the IFL to fill that out for you and don't worry about it guys, honestly I used to worry so much and you can kind of be savvy with it if you feel like the manager or the in-flight lead is really really nice and you know you're going to work well together, get them to do it. If you feel like they're really mean, <laughs> maybe don't ask them. But you know what, most of the managers and in-flight leads are amazing, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But yeah, so you kind of get monitored on that, in that way. But that's like a new thing that they're bringing back in, so they're probably going to see how it works. If it does well, if not, they might just get rid of it, you never know. So I think that is all, or most of the questions that I have got so far really hope that that was a bit insightful to all these people who are saying they're going to start flying with BA say hello to me if you see me in the CRC or on board or whatever it's always really nice like people do come up to me and say like oh what's your video and it's, it's really nice because it makes me know that they're actually helpful <laughs> rather than me just sitting here chatting loads of crap so I really hope that this was insightful and I really hope that I got to answer your questions because I get quite a lot of DMs on Instagram and I, I don't always have the time to answer them or see them. Sometimes I don't even see them. So I hope that this definitely helped. But yeah, so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. It is just Jessica Jessica. Bye guys, have a beautiful time.